seven people that may not know, what qualifies you to give perspective on this? Man, I mean, I was a U.S. Army Ranger, uh, sniper, sniper team leader. Before that, I was a designated marksman. Um, after I left the service, uh, I went into private military contracting, did diplomatic security, was a sniper over there. I did diplomatic security details for Joe Biden at the time when he was vice president. Mm. And I did it for um, uh, Hillary Clinton. I forget her uh, what position she was at during that time, but she came to Baghdad. Uh, we took her around, did some security for her. It was during the time she lost the BlackBerry over yeah. there. We, yeah. <laughs> and we got to recover that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, so what is everybody missing here? Everybody's focused on the, the the roof that the shooter was on. From your perspective, what is everybody missing? Like, what, what concerns you about where everybody's looking over here and they might want to take a minute to think about this over here? Yeah, to, to be honest, man, I think the, the, the biggest takeaway from it is the gaping holes and the security detail itself. Mm. Like, when you're doing private security at that level, dude, there's no way any rooftop at that distance, especially we're looking at 152 yards away, there's no way that that rooftop is going to be, you know, if, if not a body on it, have eyes on it at all times. Like that, that happens weeks, if not months prior to even going out. It's like, is that, uh, is, is that, a, is that a, a absolute mistake that could randomly happen? No, nah, man, it doesn't ran. No, it does not randomly happen. That's like a, it's so many catastrophic failures. It's like for all those things to happen in that security detail, to have that, that hole in security, like for all that to happen, somebody, it almost doesn't feel real, man. Like it feels like I don't, I'm not trying to be like a conspiracy theorist too much, but dude, it just, it, it's something that does not happen. You know, when I saw this video and I saw that there was a sniper on the video, I was excited because there's a lot of people that are online talking about stuff they don't know anything about with sort of authority and as if they know what they're talking about with confidence oh this is uh, an absolute failure and they should have done this and why didn't they do this and blah, blah 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 this doesn't make any sense this is suspicious you know and it's like don't speak with such authority about something you don't fully understand now, I've spoken a lot about my ideas in terms of what I thought happened, but I'm not prepared to make a definitive statement about who failed or whatever it is. My focus is on local police, but I need more data to be able to come to a conclusion. But I see many people that don't have all the details, don't have all the facts, don't know all the communications. Who said what at what time in terms of radio communications who saw what when like we don't know all the details a lot of gaps so for anyone regardless of your expertise whether you're a former sniper to be speaking definitively and saying that there were all these major holes in the security we don't know that it certainly looks bad we certainly need to investigate but we don't know enough to come to that conclusion case in point this is exactly the kind of guy that you'd want to listen to and hear their thoughts on the matter but listen to what he just said. He is stating that you would never, ever, in this type of situation, have that building either with someone on top of it or with eyes on it. Well, here's the reality. There were two local snipers inside that building on the second floor. In addition to that, the Secret Service snipers most definitely were watching that building, which is why the shooter was killed very very shortly after he fired those shots and another detail that I think a lot of people are missing is and I think even this guy as a sniper missed it as well and that's why it's not about your intelligence it's not about what you know you know critical thinking is still something that is required because you could be the expert here but if you get caught up in in certain biases right maybe you feel a certain way about something and then you get into confirmation bias where you're seeing everything through that lens as opposed to looking at it objectively and with skepticism and, and with some level of humility to where, like I keep saying, I don't know all the details, right? I can, I can choose in terms of theoretically where I think there might have been an issue, but I stop at that limit in terms of saying that I think this is where 
the issue may come from. And one of the things I also said as well is I don't know if it's actually on the Secret Service because, you know, oh, the buck stops with them. They're the ultimate authority in the security. You know, however, if Secret Service has given instructions to the local police and the local police fail to follow those instructions, I don't know that that is still a Secret Service issue as opposed to it being a local police issue. Now, if the local police were not given specific instructions and they chose to do something that led to this security breach, right? And again, Secret Service was not involved enough to identify this issue and tell them about uh, an adjustment they need to make. Then in that case, it would be definitively Secret Service's fault, right? It, it, for Secret Service to allow them to come up with a weak plan that allows a president, the former president to almost be shot, that's a failure of Secret Service. But if the Secret Service correctly identifies this building as a threat and gives instructions to local police in terms of how to mitigate that threat, they're not going to babysit the local police, right? I don't think that's an expectation of, of the Secret Service. Now, that's not to say because the risk is, is so high that they're not going to try to at least pay attention like in the idea of them just giving them instruction and then just like ignoring them completely i don't think that's necessarily the way to go but they would not be tasked with the responsibility of babysitting the local police because if you're babysitting them then you're doing the job like either you're doing the job of securing that building locally or the local police is doing it but you can't have the local police securing that building and then secret service is also trying to do that 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 local uh security of the building um that doesn't make any sense but again was that was the, was the counter sniper was he secret service or was he just local pd yeah i just found that out today he was a secret service sniper that shot him wow. so i just found that out today um earlier this like a few hours ago reading a news clip i'm not like 100 percent. it was on the news it was on a news article i'll have to send it to you but they said it was a, a secret service police sniper so a, a sniper Okay, so we fast forward. We so this is another example of, again, a real big problem with this conversation about the shooting that's happening in social media. That even a guy who has expertise can, you know, have a lot of problems with their commentary. So he just found out that Secret Service killed the shooter. Today is July 16th, and this live stream was either, I believe, yesterday or last night. So we've known for days now, we've known for days now that, this, that the Secret Service snipers killed the shooter. That's one of the first things that we found out the day of. And here we have not just one, but two people. The sniper in this conversation and the host neither of them is even aware of that detail a fundamental detail so their information is days behind they're giving us their opinions about what they think happened and yet they are days behind and don't even know the fundamentals of what was happening they don't know about the snipers in the building they don't know, apparently, about the officer that was nearby. I didn't see them mention anything about the officer that actually confronted the shooter. They don't know about the Secret Service sniper team actually covering that building. And we'll get confirmation of that. But I think that's, that's fairly obvious, as the Secret Service was aware of the threat. But... Here they are providing commentary on the situation and being very definitive and like, you know, there were major holes or many holes. How do you know that there were many holes? How can you make that assessment? I mean, we know obviously something failed because, you know, people died. The president almost got hit. But we cannot know that there were many holes, right, without knowing much more details. For all we know, there was a single hole. There was a single mistake, right? One small mistake could be the result of, could be the reason for what happened, right? It only takes a small mistake for, for things like this to happen. Now, there are other things where opportunities for this to have been stopped. So you might want to add those to the list as well. But, you know, 
additional opportunities to stop this are not the same thing as a, a definitive security hole. Like for example, what if the secu what if the Secret Service told them that they should put someone on the roof and they didn't do it? Right? That's a little bit different than police officers had spotted this guy, you know, a while before, I think 30 minutes before. And I get these I've <laughs> I bet these guys are not even aware of that. I think 30 minutes before they had spotted him and identified him as a suspicious person. Right? Now, just because someone's identified as a suspicious person, it depends on why you think they're suspicious. That doesn't mean you're going to like arrest them or detain them or have someone follow them around for the whole day. But that is another potential opportunity where maybe this could have been stopped somehow, but it's not black and white. Right? And I don't know if I'd necessarily regard that as a security hole. Again, unless I know the details, right? I need to know why they thought he was suspicious. I need to know what was done about it exactly. I need to know what is the protocol in terms of what they were supposed to do. Did they follow did they follow their procedures or did they violate procedures? Right? I need to know all the details before I can come to a definitive conclusion in terms of who failed, how they failed, um, whether there's one security hole or multiple security holes. But here's here are these people talking, oh there's multiple things they messed up with and they don't even know the basic facts. I'm pretty sure, we'll wait till we find out all the details, that Secret Service were monitoring that building. We know they definitely identified it as a threat, right? And I'm pretty sure there was a sniper team that was focused on that building. They also had the additional tasks of focusing on 360 degree area that had extended well beyond that building. So that is that introduces a little bit of a, a performance issue in terms of, um, it's not like they're focused 100% on that building. But then again, again, that's why we gotta wait for all the details. How do we know that one of the teams, there were two teams, right? Two sniper teams for the Secret Service, right? Close to t uh, Donald Trump. How do we not know that one of them was tasked with monitoring that building as an additional layer of security? So they would have discussed this, the, the, uh, the plan. So they would have been aware, most likely, that there were two local snipers inside the building and there was an officer that w was uh, around the building as well. Now, we got to wait until we get definitive information. Was that officer just, just coincidentally walking by or was he supposed to be patrolling the building? But we do know that there was an officer nearby who tried to walk up the building and they said he fell over or something like that. He tried to confront the shooter. So there was an officer that was local, I assume, on the ground. There were two local snipers in the building, so you have three layers of security within that building. And then you have a fourth layer, which would be one or both of the sniper teams, the uh, Secret Service sniper teams, that would have been aware of that building and therefore keeping a close eye on the building, and which would explain why they were able to kill him so quickly. Because remember, if they weren't focused on that building, right, the first thing they get is a notification of there's some building over there, blah, 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 something happening. So now the first thing they need to do is to identify the building that people are referring to. It's not magic, right? If, 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 they, if they get a radio call that there's a building, whatever, whatever, the first thing is, in, in question in their minds, which building are you, they referring to? Obviously, they give them some kind of directions, north side, southwest of whatever, but still, they need to, they need to process that information, right? And, and try to visually identify landmarks and whatever, and like, okay, I think that's the building they're talking about. Okay, um, are you sure that's the right building? Because the guys on the other side of the building, they can't see him yet, so there's nothing to really see. Now they're scanning around, looking, 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 trying to identify something. No one would have been would have been seeing him at this point because he's on top of the building. People on the ground can't see him, right? So the only people that had a chance of seeing him would be these snipers that are s searching for him, right? And the, uh, that's a lot of delay. But if they were already focused on that building, they would be able to react much faster as we saw, um, it, it, you know, that's actually what happened. So this is just to say, be very, very careful when you're listening to people talking about this. Everyone's an expert. Everyone is, is sure, you know, this is set up. It's fake. It's the Secret Service's fault. It's the local police department's fault. They should have been covering the building. There should have been people there. I mean, listen to this guy. Here's a video of this guy who was an expert saying that it's surprising that the building wasn't covered when the building was covered with several layers of security. Now, the question is, why did all of those layers of security fail? But they're not having this discussion because this sniper did not take the time to inform himself to actually understand what was actually happening so he can comment on what they actually did. Instead, 
he has this idea in his mind, probably uh, um, a result of a lot of other opinionated people online saying different things. People saying, oh, they didn't even cover the building. And he doesn't investigate that claim. And now he's commenting on a, uh, on a claim that he heard somewhere they didn't investigate. So it's like a straw man, right? He's, he's commenting on something that actually did not happen. Right. He's commenting on this building not being covered by anyone. They just had this building there it was so close and and no one was watching it. That's not what happened. Right. This is the debate me channel. Debate me in the comment section below. Click on the like button. Subscribe. Smash that bell. Be well.